thanks a lot for a, a wonderful uh, performance tonight. I would like to uh, introduce you quickly. It's uh, to my right. It's Lucie uh, Vigneault. Oui. Oui. Uh, Justin Gioli, uh, Gioni. Uh, Emmanuel Prou. Uh, three of the dancers uh, of uh, Daniel Leveillé's piece that we uh, saw uh, today. And uh, I would like to start with a question. Whenever you have a question, I will repeat it and give it to the uh, microphone, through the microphone so that everybody can hear it. And um, maybe I start to warm up with uh, one or two questions if you, if you like to. First of all, I would like to ask you who who of you uh, was involved when this piece has been created? Can you... Uh, and, uh, Manu as well. Okay. Um, myself and Manu. Uh, and Lucy was there for mo most of the... Of uh, it the wasn't created uh, with me, on mm -hmm. me, but mm -hmm. uh, I was there for the premiere. Yes. So, uh, yes, I was there quite at the beginning, but not at the beginning. So you have a long history with uh, Dan, uh, working with Daniel Leveillé or? Uh, 16 years for me. Yeah. 16 16 years. 15 years, yeah, well. since 2005. Yeah. yeah, it's been a while. Well. Mm -hmm. So somebody just said it's, uh, it's um, very tough for the dancers uh, to come on stage and go from zero to 100 immediately. Uh, without any pardon. How does it feel like? Well, especially from zero to 100 in, in six months of not doing <laughs> much dance, you know? It's uh, quite a, a challenge, but uh, um, I think for, from, for the perspective of the public, uh, some, some movement might seem really hard, or may, but uh, some, some of the hard moves are not the one that will appear as hard. So uh, the challenge for, for us is, is just uh, how you're going to deal with the difficulty more because if it's perfect or if it's too easy then it's not uh, interesting so uh, i think we're focusing more on what do we do uh with the, the little on balance am i gonna go try to skip it through even though you i'm sure you're gonna see that uh, you, you will be able to see that we 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 skipped and we didn't uh, we let go the challenge or we let go the fight and sometimes you will notice that uh, we're, we're fighting to keep the 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 movement in place or to jump to the next movement. So these are all the decisions that we focus on to be able to uh, go through this one aspect. I mean, it, it is an interesting process of like you come on stage and you just, you just begin. It's very, it's, it's levé, it's very, it's very dry. Things like they just, they just start. Especially your parts are quite it's, explosive, yeah, no? Yeah, They're, it's true. It's I'm sure every I'm sure every dancer has a different um, preparation process for that sort of thing. Um, I like my personal preference is to I tend to visualize a lot. Um, I'll in my head run through like most of the show beforehand. But whereas other dancers will actually like physically execute the entire like most of the show before actually doing the show. Um, so it's really going to be variable depending on what every dancer needs, and uh, because the solos are all as much as they have some of the same material in them, they're all very, very different. So everybody is going to need a, a different preparation. There's no, there's no like consistency. It's very, it's very tailored. Is what I'm trying to say. And, uh, if, if we may talk a little bit about the creation process uh, of this work, uh, is it very much like uh, you're working with Daniel Levier? Uh, who, who won't, who is not with us uh, uh, tonight because uh, also taking a trip from Montreal is uh, n not an easy thing uh, in these days. So um, uh, apologies for him not being here, but um, uh, he's, uh, I think he says hi to you. <laughs> <laughs> and um, so was the process uh, in the beginning very isolated from each other, the, the creation of all the solos, and, uh, and that you mm. the later on bring it together, or were you all involved with it? Um, uh, it's, uh, it's, been, it's been a little bit since we did this process. It was created in 2012. Um, but uh, from what I recall, um, we, usually, we usually work in small groups to begin the, to begin the creation process, uh, usually I think we were usually three dancers. Um, 
And uh, Danielle's creation process is, uh, is very, very linear. He'll, he'll, um, he'll ask us to attempt something, that, like an idea that he'll have in his head. And it's usually, just, it's usually just one movement or one position. And then from there, he'll ask us if it's possible to um, execute the next movement or the next, like get, find a way to the next position. Um, and it, the, the phrases build themselves in that way, much the same way that you're like building words with letters or, or phrases with words. Um, and then uh, we, we would film that and then uh, we would leave it alone. Uh, so we got like a bank of material and then we left it alone for months. Uh, I'm sure Danielle did something with it, I don't know. But we came back months later and uh, he took it all apart, like all the, all the phrases and all the movement and then put it all back together again upon us. Um, so we had to go through that process of like finding a way to go from one position to the next all over again, uh, from positions that sometimes didn't really make sense, like on your body physically, uh, which was pretty interesting, I think. Um, do, do you want to add anything? Well, then what's really interesting, the movement is really like, I feel like it's really pure movement they're really they're really formal in some ways you know you don't have like we're not like uh, simmering bacon or like flipping sides with it's really we all the position have a name or like they're really yeah formal they they can have they can relate to ballet or they can uh, uh, they can you you've seen this position before you know they're really anatomical i can say in some way um but what's really interesting i think what the the most um, attention was spent on uh, transmitting um, the, the musicality and uh, rhythm and this is also what's really get uh, forgotten quickly that's why the video was pretty useful but uh, i really feel like the the score or like the the notes are really really clear and then we have so much more room to put musicality on top of it. So sorry, I, di I didn't fully we'll understand that. 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 So he takes a, he takes the step steps at home, listens to music, and then he rearranges it with the music. Or you see, yeah, apparently, he, yeah, he spent he spent all those all those months just listening to yes. recordings of music and finding which like <laughs> songs would best accompany the the movement. Yeah, just to make clear, like we have music, but we're even though we could count or we could put certain move on certain notes, uh, it's really a superposition. But there's no, uh, we're really not following music, or we don't have to put a certain step on certain music. Yeah, we, we, when we began the process, there was there was no music at all. So he's actually working while you're thinking he's he's making a break. <laughs> so uh, what I what I wanted to ask you is um, if you're working with Daniel Levy and uh, his kind of signature is is very well known as being like um, a puristic, uh, repetitive in in a way, uh, really demanding. Uh, on Obsessive. The, pardon. Obsessive. Obsessive as well. I didn't want to say that because I don't have the impression when I'm watching uh, uh, the piece, but maybe uh, in the process. Um, uh, what m makes you as a dancer to s decide uh, working with a choreographer like Daniel Levy? My God. Um, for me, I remember when I saw my first piece of Daniel, it was uh, Amour Assez des Noix, and I was, I remember I was thankful. <laughs> it was like, oh my God, this is seeing dance, a body dancing. And I was, yeah, for me, just an example, because I have this flash in my head, there was Ivana, the female dancer at, at this time in the piece, and she, it was all naked. And they, there was a really beautiful arabesque. And for me, it was the first time I saw like 
an arabesque, really, I saw an arabesque. And so this is just an example, but I remember it was something new for me and really, uh, yeah, <laughs> it's thankful. I was like, merci. Merci, Daniel Levey, for this experience. So when he asked me to join and to... Um, uh, I was really happy to uh, have the chance to uh, to dive in, but I, I knew it was hard. <laughs> At the same time, it's like, oh my God, yay! And whoa! <laughs> but it's a challenge, and it's my God. If you can allow me, this um, this piece really came after, um, let's say, a, a new. Uh, um, a new process, there was really uh, three famous pieces that, that went on tour, and some were still touring a few years ago. Um, they called Amour Assez des Noix, was the start of it, with full nudity. Uh, and then there was The Modesty of Iceberg, which was also a piece with full nudity. And then The uh, uh, Twilight of the Ocean. So these three pieces took uh, almost 10 years uh, process uh, overall. Um, so they had their really their signature, and w when he came with this this solo, it was really the start of a new cycle like, uh, that, that was started. So for us, we had some reference of the creative process that happened before, but we really had to reinvent uh, ourselves. And for me, this this piece was really a staple piece, really uh, for, for interpretation. Really finding, um, like uh, I was, uh, like I said, like the score is there, but how do you, uh, what's the room you have for the musicality and the interpretation with a fixed score, like this? It's funny because uh, when we you were talking about that, the freedom, because it's solo, this piece, you have freedom, and at the same time you have no freedom. <laughs> It's so written, it's so, it's the partition so written, and at the same time, because you are alone, you have something really clear to follow, but things happen, so you decide sometimes, mm. mini yeah. silence or ta ta ta. But, yeah. It's quite funny uh, because this kind of rigidity and also the the way the choreography is forcing you to be very precise and maybe with six months break <laughs> you feel like it's maybe hard to, to get that precision but as a spectator I have the, the impression that it's exactly this kind of fragility seeing you trying to avoid mistakes or making little mistakes or being a little bit off balance in, in, a, in a situation or trying to find uh, your equilibrium. Yeah, most uh, definitely, because and, there's and no... And this is what makes it, al uh, what, uh, makes it alive. There's no yeah. story. No, yeah. we don't have a story. We just do stuff, you know? We just but, dance. But that struggle, <laughs> is, that, struggle that, you're, that you're describing is, that's what fascinates Danielle. And he, he talks about this a lot, is um, if, it, if, it's ex if the movement is executed perfectly, it's boring. And um, he 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 often says, and it's true sometimes that if if um, if ever the choreography that he's given us is is too easy and we're doing it perfectly, that he'll make it harder, because then it then it becomes interesting, and that's particularly true with this piece because it's because it's solos because he can oh uh, you can do the you can do a turn and a, a turn and a half so um, this this one here is two turns he can just like turn the difficulty up whenever he wants, like a dial or like a switch. Um, and I, I think that for him was very rewarding. So is there, there's a text uh, of a German playwright, I would say, um, Heinrich von Kleist, who, who wrote about the marionette and uh, the marionette uh, kind of representing something like the ideal beauty, because it's not conscious of its beauty. So in which state of consciousness are you when you're performing that? I'm in a free fall, <laughs> free fall, free fall. And it's really, um, 
Yeah. Fear. Fr uh, frightening. Frightening. It's really frightening. And at the same time, this is what makes it exciting. Yeah, it's like wow. each movement, it's free fall. And you go. You never abandon. And yeah, so this is really exciting and really frightening at the same time. Yeah, I, I, I think we have to echo that. There's, there's no time for self-consciousness in, in this piece. Yeah. It's, um, we have to be, um, we have to be warriors. We're just constantly attacking the next movement without really, like, we're not thinking about ourselves. We're like, yeah. executing them, we're executing the movement, and when, once it's executed, we're immediately passing on to the next thing because we have to get ready and we have no time. Like, and uh, yeah. yeah. That's what I meant, like, we, we, we do stuff. We're not uh, trying to play a role, and especially that you don't, maybe you have a story in your mind, maybe you, you but this is, this is yours, you know, but, and uh, even on our side, even if, if I have a story, I, 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 get, uh, I have, have not to grab it because I, I will get lost. We just, we just plie, we just jump the furthest we can, we hold it, we deal with the little unbalance, but we, we, we do stuff and the meaning will eventually emerge or maybe the, the beauty will emerge from, from it, but we're certainly not trying to put beauty on a movement. That's yeah, but maybe that's, uh, that's the systematics behind it because he's, he's challenging you so much that you cannot think about being beautiful anymore, and this is what makes it beautiful. And this moment of uh, being always close to the disaster, maybe. <laughs> so close. Yeah. Well. Yeah, sometimes in the disasters, <laughs> sometimes. And uh, I found... Uh, I don't know, uh, when watching it today, I felt like, um, I mean, the mo movement is so much formalized all the time that a small gesture, like when you're doing like a little bit thing with your hands, which kind of breaks the system for, for a moment, mm -hmm. becomes so prominent suddenly. Mm -hmm. I mean, anyway, you're completely exposed on that little stage. Uh, there's no... Uh, distraction at all for a spectator um, so uh, there is a really high concentration and and then you as a spectator you get the impression okay I got the system somehow and suddenly there is this break yeah. and mm -hmm. that that kind kind of gives gives it a very hum humane quality in a way what I really appreciate it this wasn't really a question it was more common um, <laughs> <laughs> Anybody having a question, a serious question, we don't have to talk longer than the piece actually was. And I <laughs> promise somebody to not urge you more than 20 minutes. <laughs> no, I, I would like to thank you very much. I hope you recognized um, uh, also on stage uh, what I recognized as, an, as a member of, of the audience today, that um, I felt like everybody here took it really as a gift you were oh. performing here tonight and uh, the silence after the piece uh, is mm. something that seems to be very special in these days uh, when people still have to digest what they just got from you, uh, um, a petit cadeau. <laughs> mm. And um, I would like to thank you very much for yeah, and we feel really uh, lucky. coming over as well. It's really a pleasure. <laughs> a cadeau pour, for us too. <laughs> Really, but yeah. for, uh, if I can add to, it's really special to feel in, in kind of a resonance because you see all these chairs are like scattered, and the name of the piece is Solitude Solo, <laughs> and then it. Uh, I don't think you have the symbol here of the rainbow, but in, uh, in Canada, Quebec, it's like everything is going to be fine, and there's like rainbows everywhere. Um, and it ends up with this, and we're like solitude solo, and we're keeping all these spaces, and people are leaving a lot of of solitude with that. And I feel like this piece, if, even though it was it was uh, made a few years ago, feels it like a really good fit <laughs> on these days. Thank Abs you again. Absolutely, thanks a lot, and uh, enjoy the rest of the night. And uh, 
somewhere out there over the rainbow. <laughs> the world is fine again. <laughs> Thank you very much. Thank you, Walter. Thank you. Thank you.